In today's video, I'm gonna talk about the proper length of a tie. Now here at Kirby Allison, we have two different links to our core collection of ties, or our permanent collection. A standard 150 centimeter by eight and a half centimeters, and a long 160 centimeters by nine centimeters. Now what I'm referring to here uh, is the total length of the tie, uh, and then the length of the blade, or the width of the blade. Now the reason the width of the blade is important is because the longer the tie, generally the larger the person wearing it, and so that all needs to be proportionate. Now all of our widths are very classically proportioned. Uh, the eight and a half is a beautiful kind of timeless width. Uh, the nine uh, centimeter width on the 160s, again, uh, very beautifully and kind of classically proportioned. Now the question is, is how do you determine what the proper length is? Now if you're kind of a normal guy like I am, you know, 5'10", kind of a slight build, you know, our standard 150 centimeter length uh, is really perfect. Now, the proper length is a function of several uh, characteristics, and there's really a lot going on here, so I'm gonna try to simplify this. Generally, the taller you are, if you're over six feet tall, you're probably gonna need a longer 160 centimeter length tie. But that's not the hard, fast rule. The second criteria is really uh, how large is your neck? Uh, do you have a prominent belly that you need the tie to get over? Uh, so even someone that is shorter than six feet tall, 5'10", even 5'8", you know, if you've got a particularly large neck, you're going to need a longer tie uh, for the tie to get around. Now, what is the proper length? Well, at the end of the day, what really matters is where does the tie fall once it's been tied? Now, the general rule is that the length of the tie, or the large blade, really should come just to the top of your trousers right here. Now, I'm uh, certainly a little bit of an exception to that rule because I'm wearing a very high-waisted trouser uh, that is actually above my navel. So here you'll see uh, that the large blade uh, is coming uh, below my trousers uh, quite significantly here, and the small blade is even dropping a little bit below the large blade. Now, whenever you're tying your tie, you should really always control kind of where that knot is or kind of where the tie is before you tie it uh, to control for the large blade. Now, if the small blade is dropping, you know, an inch, maybe an inch and a half, two inches might be pushing it uh, below the large blade, that's okay. And then if the small blade is even an inch, inch and a half, two, uh, maybe even three inches shorter than the large blade, that's okay also. Now, how do you know that you need a longer tie? Well, if you tie your tie and the small blade is like all the way up here, you know, halfway, uh, you know, down the tie, then that probably is a good uh, tall tale sign that you really need a longer tie, and that's where the 160s really come in. Now the next thing in play uh, to really uh, complicate matters even further is the type of knot that you're tying will again affect the length of the tie once it's been tied. So I uh, tie uh, all my knots using the old birdie. You can see the video on how to tie this knot on the YouTube channel. It's one of my favorite, slightly long knot, asymmetric, uh, and it's really my favorite tie knot. Uh, now, it doesn't really use much uh, tie to tie, if you will, uh, and so it results in a slightly longer tie whenever it's tied. Uh, and so a lot of my ties uh, always end up with the small blade, uh, you know, a little bit longer than the large blade, just because, again, I'm not using much tie for the old birdie. Now, if you're someone that ties using a full Windsor or a half Windsor, those are very full knots, uh, and I could take this same tie and tie a full Windsor, and this, this length of the tie could be the same, but that short blade would come up significantly because, again, that particular knot uses a more tie, if you will. So that's another thing that really goes in to kind of determining the length of your tie. Now, unfortunately, there's no hard, fast rule in terms of, uh, you know, kind of what length you should have. It really is a function of your stature, how tall you are, how large you are, what type of tie knot you like to tie, uh, how you wear your trousers also plays into it. Uh, and my best advice would be to take out a tie that you already have in your closet, tie it up, see how it falls. Based off of how it falls, determine whether or not you need a shorter or longer tie, and then uh, take that tie, untie it, and then measure the full length. So the purpose of this video was really meant to be just a quick primer or summary of the different factors and characteristics that go into determining the proper tie length. If you have any questions, please ask them in the comments section below. Check out our other videos that we have about tie. We're filming an entire series this week. And make sure you visit KirbyAllison.com and check out our exceptional collection of sovereign grade neckties. I'm Kirby Allison. Thanks for joining me.